Special Operations, Covert Ops, Espionage, The Team House, with your hosts, Jack Murphy and David Park. Um, and maybe not as nimble as some units, but it's pretty nimble. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah, it was definitely, I saw that, but the reality was, at the end of the day, when we went up, ended up going in, we went on 160th aircraft. So that's when I realized that all that's great, but there are certain capabilities that only the military has. Right. And it's amazing capability that came out of the ashes of Desert One, mm -hmm. yeah. and we're the only country in the world that could do that stuff. Yeah. And that, that was really amazing, because at first, just quickly anecdote, when I first got there to DC, they were speculating on infill uh, rat line mechanisms. One was, hey, we'll take you out to the carrier, and then you'll be brought in by Hilo into southern Afghanistan, and then you'll wear burqas. That was at one point that was kind of spitballed. At one point we were gonna go in a truck that was modified to hide, with hide, to hiding a hidden compartment then we were going to go on other aircraft, and then finally, uh, General Franks, you know, long story short, coughed up uh, the aircraft to do it, and they were 160th aircraft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're direct, direct action penetrators, one uh, MH60. So. Could, could you tell us a little bit about the the team you were assigned to? Um, you know, how many guys were there? How, what were these guys like? I mean, who were they? And you're you're experiencing sort of all of this for the first time as a as an army dude, as a green suiter, hanging out in a black world, I guess you could say. And, um, and that sort of run up to, to insertion. So they were all, the first thing, they were all prior service guys. They're all military guys. I mean, every last one of them. So, you know, JR had been uh, uh, an infantry officer. Uh, uh, you know, Dave had been in the military. Alex had this storied career as a sergeant major. Uh, you know, Andy, uh, all, they were all like, they were all prior service. So that, you know, that was a prereq, right? So we had all those guys, and then JR was kind of an outsider they brought in from another area, but they brought him in because he was known to be a uh, guy who worked well with the military. And he had, in fact, been a guy, I think he had briefed Schwarzkopf in, uh, in, in Desert Storm. So he was well known, and I think Hank Crumpton picked him, handpicked him to do that job because he was like a GS 15 at the time. So, yeah, it was amazing that as quickly as they put the team together and as quickly as they shuffled the order of march because we were not originally going to be the first one of the first teams in of course gary schroen's team was in but uh it was sort of up in the air and then we were moved from the back of the formation so to speak to the front and to this day i think alex knows the reason i don't know why but that's when things changed and all of a sudden the next day we're it's like hey tomorrow we're going to the we're going to the airport and so um so yeah, but but uh, they were all good guys, uh, really good, uh, sharp guys, and I it, it took a while to get to know them, but I realized it right off the bat that uh, you know that this was, uh, however the team was put together, they'd done something right, mm -hmm. um, and they always said you know Jer would say well it's good to be the first one of the first teams in, because you know there's certain advantages to that and it's everything's new and nothing's established right mm -hmm. you have ability to shape things like yeah. That. Indeed, and and so uh, that was cool. Um, yeah, so and Scott had been in uh, uh, Mogadishu, and I learned later that he had gone to VMI like me, but he was like four or five years older than me, so I, I, he had graduated before I got there. So that was a little bit of, there was some affinity there. Um, but anyway, yeah, so they were good. Um, they trusted me to do my piece, and they had their piece to do, and Jer knew more about Afghanistan than anybody I had met. And then Dave, of course, knew tons about Afghanistan, particularly Northern Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And he had the language skills that were phenomenal. Uh, so that was indispensable. So we had those two guys. We had Alex, who was the Sergeant Major, who was like, you know, looking after the team. And then you had these younger guys who were all, you know, champing at the bit to do something. They had me, who was the, the gun guy and the HLZ Pathfinder, really a Pathfinder kind of guy. And that was it. And uh, we were there with uh, Fifth Group, which had a very kind of expeditionary presence of the GP mediums and so-called piss holes and all that kind of stuff had just been established, a little rough. 
And uh, we, uh, we isolated for, I think, three days. So there was a delay. And then on the, uh, you know, I think it was, you know, it's in the book, of course, the, the night of the, uh, I think of the 15th over 16th period of darkness was when we went in in October. So, uh, and, and we went on, on 160th birds. And there's a whole story in the book yep. about how the daps were picked and the 47s didn't go. At the time, I didn't really think about it. But um, later on, I met the guys, and I, I realized, yeah, that is somewhat, you know, weird, uh, yeah. uh, weird, right? It was good. It was uneventful, uh, uneventful flight uh, down to the Uzbek border. Uh, we left right after dusk. I think it was like nine o'clock. We went wheels up, and I remember talking to Colonel Mahal, and he was standing on the tarmac. And this is, you know, you know, like right, you know, right at dusk, and. You know, I'd been pounding water because I get hydrated. Once we get shot down, I want to be ready. You know, all this kind of stuff that's going through your mind, all the various contingencies that can occur. And then all of a sudden, I had to go to the bathroom, like horribly. And I ran over there, went to the bathroom, came back, and he's just staring at me. And, you know, he's a pretty tall, and he's just staring at me, and it was really it made me a little uncomfortable. And then I kind of took a step closer to him, and he goes, don't get killed. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't get killed, just like that. And he's got these big hands, he's like, don't get killed. And I said, I'll try not to let you down. And um, and then he left, and then we got on the aircraft. We had rehearsed, you know, on, 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 on load, off load, all that kind of stuff. And they were, you know, right after dark, we were up. And I want to say it was two and a half hours, maybe-ish, three hours, I can't remember. But I found out later that was the first uh, combat aerial refueling. In of a of, in a, theater. of an M six M H sixty in theater, or ever, uh, combat. Oh wow! Because I guess it qualified as combat yeah, at yeah. that point, right? So, and I, I I was sitting in the back, and I had PBS sevens. I mean, we went in pretty light. I mean, we had AKMSs, uh, Glocks, uh, two backpacks, you know, med bag and med kit, you know, the thigh thing with the morphine and all that kind of the Oshermans and and, I, and that was it, you know, and. Um, not a lot of food because we were going to be relying on the Afghans, which actually worked out fine. And I'm looking through the, the PBS 7s and I see this 47 chasing us in the back, which I didn't know was there. I'm like, I just kind of wondered, why is he following us? Because the 160th, they didn't explain anything. They were like, hey, we got the, the infill. You guys just sit back and ride. And uh, Jarrah had the headset on. I didn't. So I don't know what was being said. So we're just sitting there and I'm enjoying the ride. And it was smooth. And um, all of a sudden I look out in the distance and the lights of what was Uzbekistan, Uzbekistan just end, and then it's just black mm -hmm. beyond that. South of that, it was just dark. And I'm like, I remember thinking, that has to be Afghanistan. And then there was a little shimmer off the Amudaria River because there was a little bit of loom. And I said, that must be the river. And then, you know, like a minute later, the crew chief was like, pass back, hey, we're in Afghanistan. And we looked down, and that part of Afghanistan, uh, north of Mazar, near the Uzbek border, they have a lot of sand dunes, and so I remember seeing that, and then we hit the mountains, went in another maybe 30, 45 minutes, and then uh, we infilled, and uh, it was unique in the sense that normally, as we all know, you know, you kind of flare in like that, and you land, right, it's more efficient, but all of a sudden, it's like we stopped, and then we just elevated straight down, and I never done that from that kind of altitude and I remember looking to either side of the aircraft and it was sheer like rock face so it was a gorge and wow. I don't know what the clearance was the rotor disc space between the rock and the rotor disc space but it wasn't much and we went straight down and we landed and then we got out and we all had our little duties and um, set up a perimeter and then we talked to the crew chief and thumbs up and uh, there was two birds in the offset like that. And then they left. They were like, bye. We unloaded our stuff. And that was it. And they were gone. And then as soon as, you know, that, it, you know, as soon as you go in on air assault, there's, you know, the, the, the tumult, tumult of the, the engines and all that. And the prop rotor wash. And then they're gone. And it's silent. It's, yeah, dead yeah, silent. It's just silent. Yeah. And then you're yeah. sort of like, okay, this is when I'm supposed to do sills. And then I remember looking through my nods and there's these, Afghans, there's like a wall of them, and there's some horses, and they're sort of neighing and all that kind of stuff. And there's this one big guy, because Dosen's a little bigger than everybody else. He's at least six foot, I think. And uh, he comes out, and then he goes towards JR, and JR meets up with them, and they shake hands, and they start chatting a little bit in, I guess, Dari. And, um, and from there, we picked up everything, and we were ushered quickly into a meeting, and that was a big meeting. And then um, I remember 
JR and Dave and I and everybody were sort of arguing over whether we should take our weapons in. Because, you know, it's a little bit awkward, but hey, we're in Afghanistan, we don't know these guys. Right. Oh, by the way, Dostum's reputation wasn't the best, so, right. Right. you know, it's like, I don't know, man. And so basically, we decided to take our weapons in. And I remember sitting down, and you're doing the Indian, you know, the, the sort of cross-legged thing. And, uh, and they were chatting, and it was all done in Dari. And uh, so JR was really good about explaining and gisting what was going on. But I remember sitting next to Mike, and we were told to take notes, and so I was trying to take notes, and I had to listen to what Jer was relaying to us. And then, and that went on for about an hour, uh, and then it was like, okay, let's get you settled in. There was a little kala down the, you know, a little ways down, and uh, we'll get a couple hours of sleep, and we'll get up in the morning and get get busy. And it was like, you're going to go do the HLZ. You're going to identify an HLZ, survey it, send it up, got it. So next morning, we woke up. And um, they uh, they brought a vehicle. It's a, I think that there's a picture in the book. Maybe there isn't, but it was a you know jingly truck, whatever you want to call jing, it. Yeah, they packed truck. with RPG rounds. They were in these like burlap sacks or some sort of sack that you put grain in or something like that. Maybe it isn't in there. Is this it? Uh, it's it that. It's that probably that truck, but it's a different photo. But that probably one of those trucks, something like that. And. Um, and that was the truck we rode to what towards the front line, which as the crow flies probably wasn't more than 10, 15 clicks, maybe 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 15, 10, 15 miles, no more than that. But on the roads there, the road was riverbed, riverbed was a road that took forever. But I distinctly remember Dave, um, his Uzbek, because the, the guy was Uzbek, if I remember was so good, he was just rapping with the guy, talking to him, and then he would joke, and the guys, they were laughing, and they're telling jokes and all that. And I'm trundling along there <laughs> with my AK, and then we get to this, this uh, day he was the town. We got out, we met with, you know, the, the local sub-commander, who was one of Dostum's lieutenants. We had a discussion about Force Array and how many troops he had and all this kind of stuff, and then I went out with Dave and... You know, I surveyed the HLZ based on the the it was the SWIC uh, GTA that they gave you, that fold out, that trifold thing, and I just used that, and then we sent it up uh, later on the in the day, and that was the HLZ survey, and then they came back and said just mark the hazards with the higher strobe, and we got the rest, and then we went up the. I think the next day was when we first got on horses, so they had a couple of vehicles, but not many, to move, you know precious cargo, for lack of a better word, you know, RPGs and rounds and whatever. Uh, but everybody else was either footbound or they had like a couple of Hiluxes, but mainly it was horses. And so they showed up and they said, we're going to the front line. 